everyone and welcome back to my channel so today i have a super chill video for you guys i wanted to do another photo editing tutorial slash chatty video because honestly i just love taking pictures and i love instagram and everything like that who doesn't these days good afternoon Siri needs to chill. A lot of this tutorial is about how I take it and just tips and tricks on how to use your iPhone effectively. I get so many questions on the daily about my Instagram and most of them are selfies at the moment because my life just hasn't been that interesting. And hopefully you guys can learn something new about photo editing or how to actually take photos using your iPhone. And I always get so many requests to film a video about how I take selfies using an iPhone and making it the quality that it is. Uh, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, you may not know what kind of selfie style I'm talking about. It's kind of that golden in the sun kind of look. And a lot of you guys are always asking me what camera I use and I only use my iPhone. So I wanted to show you guys how I do that today. Also, we are gonna be chatting through some editing techniques. We're gonna be chatting through some tips and tricks when you are taking the photo. I'm gonna be showing you guys how I do that today, especially in that kind of golden look. We're going into summer. We love being in the sunshine. Well, I know I do. I think a big part of taking a good photo, not all the time, it depends on the vibe, but for me especially, it does have to do with hair and makeup. I like to express myself through outfits and clothing and hair and definitely taking photos. So Instagram is a great place to do it. I've done so many tutorials, so definitely check out my channel if you guys are interested in some makeup tutorials to get yourselves ready before you start to take your selfies. Now, I have to say, lighting is absolutely everything. Lighting is key. If the lighting is off, in my opinion, I won't get as good of a photo. I do a lot with natural light. Personally, I don't like taking my photos on a day like today, for example, where there's a lot of clouds. It's very grey because I definitely feel like it washes me out and it just doesn't make me look as glowing and as radiant. I'm not saying direct sunlight is the only method to take a selfie by any means. It's just this specific style to get that kind of golden hour look. It depends on what time of the year that you're in. It depends what country you're in. Honestly, it all depends. But when the sun isn't from directly above you and it's kind of on the horizon, that's when it's nicer because it's kind of hitting you in that direction. Also, the sky does start to fill with colours if you catch it at a great time. So that means that you'll get that really gorgeous golden glow, um, which a lot of people search for in filters, but God gave us a natural filter and it's perfect, honestly. So honestly, guys, lighting is everything. And I definitely recommend you guys just to play around with different times. If you guys are interested in photography as well, not necessarily in just taking a selfie, it's really interesting to play around with light. And that's something I really like to do. I don't typically tend to take selfies using artificial lights. I know a lot of people do. They use a ring light or they use something like that. I personally like to use natural light as often as I can, as much of a pain it can be in this country. Um, the sun is always going in and out of the clouds because it's cloudy a lot in the UK but I honestly think nothing beats natural lighting and artificial lighting does tend to be very very harsh in comparison to the soft lighting that I tend to get the effect from natural lighting if that makes sense. The difference is actually amazing using natural lighting even on a well lit day if there's clouds, it just gives such a different effect. Now that could be something that you are looking for, that could be your style, that could be your vibe, and that's amazing. But for this specific style of golden hour selfie, there's nothing better than actual golden hour. I still like taking my photos in direct sunlight, even if it's not golden hour, but golden hour is honestly the best time. Let's count how many times I say golden hour in this video. Probably a lot, let's be honest. Hopefully you guys understand a little bit more about lighting if you didn't already. To some of you that may have seemed obvious, but I know that when I first started taking photos, I literally didn't understand about timing or anything like that. I would see photos on Instagram and think like, how do people take this? So as far as it comes to actually using your iPhone to take a photo, because it's a touch screen and because it's just like, automatic like you don't need to focus it like you would a camera you will think that you don't have to maneuver that much with it but when taking a photo of yourself you ultimately have all the control and i personally like using the front camera because of that main reason it's purely because i can see what i'm doing i can see the settings i can change it as i'm taking it and I personally think it works great. The back camera does have much better quality, I do have to say. Like I said, one of the main things is actually understanding about your iPhone quality. A lot of people don't really go into it and they don't feel like they need to. I'm not saying you need to make major changes or you need to click any of the settings to really make a difference, but sometimes it's just learning about how the iPhone works in its camera and then once you understand it's so easy and it's just like 
how was I not doing this before? So one of the main things is of course flash. Now I don't tend to use flash very often. Um, you can use flash on the front camera with most iPhones and it just kind of flashes the screen to a really bright white and it gives you a little mini flash. Now I don't typically tend to do that and that's purely because like I said, I'll only use it if I really need to, if the lighting is really, really bad. Of course at the bottom you have all the different photo and video modes. But most of my selfies are taken in the square one. That way you can kind of see what fits in a box and if you didn't want to take a square selfie then you can use the normal photo mode. So weird, but I have my screen recording right now and I, I literally don't know which camera to look into. Um, but obviously, as you guys can see, this is how an image would look if there was no direct sunlight on me. A day like today, you're definitely not gonna get that golden hour look because so much relies on the direct sunlight. The sun is kind of peeking through the clouds, but not not golden hour. This isn't golden hour. We don't need this. When you are standing in direct sunlight, I would definitely say that standing up against a big window or even outdoors itself work the best. I really like standing all the way up against a window, just allowing the sunlight to come directly onto me. Like I said, if the sun is at like midday and it's too high above the sky, then it's going to be really hard to get your face to be directly lit. When you are in direct sunlight though, what can happen is your face can look really overexposed. Obviously it's touch screen, so what you need to do is just tap your face and drag it down the slightest. Now I didn't know that you could drag but you can and I've been teaching everyone that takes photos of me how to do this now some of you may think well duh obviously you can do that it's not common knowledge to everyone tap something really dark on the little photo screen then it will become really bright and if you touch something really bright on the photo it will become darker and then dragging it up and down you can adjust the exposure and that will really help in getting a really nice well lit photo that won't be hard to edit afterwards so that's definitely something that comes into play when we are taking selfies in direct light if you don't tap and drag downwards it's going to look really overexposed so typically what i tend to do is to tap on my face drag down a little bit depending on how bright it is and it gives you this really nice soft effect. It just makes you glow no matter what skin tone you are and I think it's gorgeous. These kind of tips and tricks all still work for the back camera but obviously you can't see what you're doing so it's a lot harder to tap on anything in direct sunlight. So when I am taking a selfie in direct sunlight I feel like the front camera is a better option because you can see it and you can adjust the settings. But if I get someone to take a photo of me always the back camera because the quality is much better. I think that gives you guys more understanding as to how I take it and this works for any scenario. Whenever you are taking a photo using your iPhone, it's really interesting to tap around and just to see like how you can adjust different lighting. I've mentioned this before in some of my other photo editing videos and the key to getting a bomb selfie is to take as many as possible. I don't think there's ever been a time where I've just taken one selfie. It's just not possible. It's minimum 10. When a photographer takes a photo, they don't just take one, do they? So once you have a good selection, it's good to favorite all of the ones that you like. I give more insight as to how I edit Instagram photos in my last editing tutorial. So I'm going to leave that down below and in the eye because I just go more into depth. I feel like you guys would really enjoy that video and there's a lot of effects and stuff like that in that tutorial. So I've mentioned this before but one of my favorite apps to put my photos through is Airbrush. It's really easy to use. It's kind of just like a generator. I feel like it's very subtle so you can very subtly slim your face, you can very subtly smooth your skin but like I said it's so subtle that I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that. So I really love the app Airbrush because it can slightly smooth things. Like I said when you take a photo at golden hour a lot of the times it's not really necessary to smooth too much anyway because the sun really is a natural filter. What I do is just run my photo through the magic tool and just see what it looks like. Now a lot of the time I will put smooth onto something like one. Sometimes I'll use the darken tool but it can almost look orange sometimes so it really does depend. If I leave it on and it does look orange I can always correct it when I'm editing it um, but because I've already got that golden glow it's not necessary to use the skin tone tool to make me look more golden than I already do and then sometimes I'll leave some of the other um, tools on depending how it goes. A lot of the time whenever I've taken a photo at golden hour it feels good enough to upload. Most of the time I will filter it and a fair amount because that's typically my style of photo. On my Instagram page most of the things are heavily edited as far as filters and effects and stuff like that. So I will do most of the editing on Visco. As you guys know Visco is one of my favorites and I just feel like there's a lot of good choices of presets on there and there's also really nice editing tools that I like to use on there. Even though I adjusted the exposure as I was taking the photo, 
sometimes it can look very very bright so I will just go down and turn it down depending on how much it is and depending on how dark I want the photo to be sometimes I will go in and sharpen a little bit just to make everything pop a little bit more add a little bit of clarity not too much because like I said I haven't smoothed my skin all that much so I wouldn't want to like add the clarity up which really makes everything look sharp depending on how my skin looks if like I said if it looks too warm because of the sun I can turn saturation down but most of the time I'll leave that until I've added my filter and then what I really like to do is to tone highlights down and then at that point I will want to choose a filter and I have always loved C4 I've been using that one for ages and it just adds a really nice almost golden purple tint onto your photo so that quite low down looks really really nice so many like I said I have the pack where I pay yearly and I get all the filters and I just honestly love so many of them it just really depends on how I'm feeling but I will add a filter and I will probably go through some of my other editing processes that I have already showed on my previous videos and also facetune if there are any things that I want to sharpen up a lot of the time I will sharpen up my eyes especially in sunlight because this looks so so pretty brown eyes or whatever eye color that you have have, but I feel like brown eyes don't get enough appreciation but brown eyes in sunlight are gorgeous so sometimes I use the sharpen tool a little bit on the eyes and it just makes them pop which is so nice I'll, I'll smooth things down a little bit but I won't want to go too crazy as I said I can whiten backgrounds if the room looks too yellow because of the golden hour also um, there's a lot that can be done on facetune and like I said I did go through this in my previous video that's pretty much it that's pretty much my method whenever I'm taking a golden hour selfie or a direct sunlight selfie a lot of the time as well if it's not golden hour I will just up the warmth a little bit on whatever I'm doing and that can kind of also give the effect that it is golden hour but I definitely feel like direct sunlight is necessary 100% anyway guys I really hope you enjoyed this video I hope you found it helpful let me know down in the comments below like I said if you want to see other photo editing videos if you do want to subscribe click right here click here to subscribe to my vlog channel and here are some videos I think you'll really enjoy hopefully this summer you guys are feeling like your best golden selves anyway I love you guys so much thank you for watching this video and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye!